Hey, welcome back. We're building a Rams S21. Uh, it's mid-January, and so far this month I've got 40 hours in. This is uh, on track. So I've got another 10 days to go. So this is on track to be a 60-hour build month, which would be good. Uh, I really cut back my building the end of last year, and if I can get 60 hours a month in, I'd be happy. Uh, it's funny, I originally thought I'd be doing 100 hours a month. Uh, it's 25 hours a week. It's barely a part-time job. And getting 100 hours a month has been tough, I'll tell you that. So if I can get 60 a month consistently, I'm going to be happy with that. Uh, just a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, oh, the other thing I was going to comment on is I'm seeing more and more uh, 21s showing up on different media hits. Uh, it's kind of exciting to see more S21s at different events and shows and things and for the world to see this, uh, this great plane. Um, uh, in this build, uh, I, wore, I finished more of the closeout parts, uh, do some trimming, do some cutting, do some painting, installing. Um, I also fix an error in the sloppy buildmanship, uh, which I cover in this video. Uh, so with that, uh, let's jump in and start building. Uh, the next step, uh, I'm going to install these side panels. This one's already cut. I'm, I'm inserting this back to the beginning because uh, I wanted to mention on the RANS website, Eddie Gill has a nice video of doing the installation of these uh, better than mine. So I'm going to kind of be brief on my installation. If you want to watch a good video on how to do this step, uh, take a look at the RANS website. The uh, first thing Eddie has you do is trim this material. These are the side pieces. And you want one and an eighth inch from flush here down to the side. Just you trim away this material here one and an eighth inch down. Uh, rather than explain every cut, I've just kind of matched. This is the right side piece, and I just kind of went to the video and kind of matched up. Looks like there's an angle here, then it runs flush and around. You know, I, at this point, I would just uh, do your own comparison on the video and cut it to match what you see and... Hopefully we can move forward from there. I've got the uh, side closeout pieces done and I've just finished priming them. In securing this uh, side panel closeout, you've got this bracket in here. And again, Eddie Gill's video talks about it. But the front side of this bracket needs to be 0.8 inches out from the outside of the post or the cage tube. So you have to measure it. I use calipers to measure it. And this tab on the bracket actually goes on the inside of that uh, tab. And I ended up using two washers AN 960-10s, which is what Eddie recommends. So I ended up using two washers, which also Eddie used, um, to get the spacing right, to get this flat part point, point 0.8 inches or 20.3 millimeters. And I also drilled out the center hole to one quarter. Uh, which is going to fit uh, these locking rivets, plastic rivets. Okay, I've got this bracket riveted in. Uh, remember, the manual calls for AAPQ42 rivets, but when you add the two washers, you'll, you have almost a quarter of an inch pull on this, so I had to go to 44s, AAPQ44s, to rivet the two sides in. And I think I mentioned that I super glued the washers to the bracket because it was just hard to get those washers threaded with your fingers so I just super glued them and then put the rivets in. Uh, I used some scrap aluminum to form the marker hole. This is uh, per Eddie Gill's video. Okay that all worked. This went in. It gets pulled up a little bit. This is that plastic rivet. I'm not going to rivet in right now because I still have to paint this uh, but it's all set and it, it fits so I'm, I'm good to go with that. I did decide to put the nut plates in this little connecting piece. You can see the nut plates here. I just put, instead of rivets, this is that piece that connects the, the foot sideboard to the kind of leg floorboard here. Um, and this goes in here. Being able to have this riveted down to this. If I ever have to get under here, taking this whole thing out as one unit, uh, I struggle just getting it out in three pieces, let alone trying to get it out as one unit. So being able to unscrew it along this flange here will make it a heck of a lot easier to lift this up first and then take this piece out second. 
So I've put in most of the closeout pieces just to lay them in and there's a lot of trimming that needs to get done. Uh, this edge needs to get trimmed. I've got to get these attached. This doesn't snap down enough. This has got some uh, support struts underneath it and I laid my uh, closeout piece in there and I got to get the carpet on this. Uh, so I've got a lot of just miscellaneous trimming to do to get this all to fit right. Okay, a little gotcha warning. Uh, in here, the blow-up manual shows some tinnermans, and you've got, I end up blowing this up on my screen, but I'll show you where it is. It's here. If you blow this up, uh, it shows that there's some tinnermans uh, that connect. The tinnermans go in here with 332nd rivets, which is unusual because the other tinnermans we've used haven't had rivets in them. So don't get your tinnermans mixed up, but there are two different tinnermans. There's this one down on 23, which has got a, an A6196 number, and then number 16 has got this A1789, and the ones in here are 23, and they've got little rivets for them, which is we haven't had tinnermans with rivets before, so don't get your tinnermans mixed up. There are a couple cage tabs you've got to locate and I used the paper trick where I taped on a piece of paper, folded it down nice and flush against this uh, cage bar, marked the hole without this panel here, and then put the panel in, pushed this over same way nice and flush, and that gave me the mark for the hole uh, for the um, cage tab. I've taken this interior closeout in and out probably seven times already, trying to match drill all the holes and get it all to fit. Uh, I'm disappointed with the gap here. Lesson learned is get this all set up, all of this set up first, and then set your rails up for this. I'm actually going to move the rails. It's a quarter inch gap here, and I'm going to move the rails back. So you need to get this set first before you set the distance on that. Not a huge correction, but uh, just lesson learned. Okay, I, uh, I repositioned these uh, rudder cover rails, or cable rail, ra rudder cable cover rails. I moved them a quarter of an inch this way to tighten up the gap. And I'm much, much happier that I've closed up this gap that was uh, there before. So um, sometimes you just got to rework some stuff. I'm moving aft with my closeout. The next thing I do is I, I drilled out these uh, holes in this for the 832nd nut plates and 832nd machine screws using a number 11 bit. I had forgotten which size was for the 832nd, so it is the number 11 bit to, to drill this out. And I drilled the four of them going across. Those are the four big tabs uh, that come off the frame. Okay, let me, uh, let me kind of update you where I'm at and then where I'm going to go from here. Uh, in doing the closeouts, um, I've got most of the covers attached. Uh, the screws aren't in all the way right now. I've got the um, fuel valve handle and bracket to put on over there. The boots, these, uh, these sticks have boots that come up. They've got to get riveted in along here. Uh, and then coming back, I've got this back closeout piece uh, in place and then if I turn the light around uh, I've laid in the floor I've got to figure out which direction all of these go and what the attachments are and then I've got to put the flooring on the back just needs to get set in after all the flooring is done but that's that's kind of what it's gonna look like and where I've got to go from here Okay, uh, one of the things I needed to get done is I need to get this fuel valve cover plate or indicator plate in. That's, uh, that's over here. You can see uh, where that fuel valve handle goes and there's a plate that goes on it. In your parts manual, there is a diagram down here that talks about the installation. And there's like four or five parts. There's uh, some long balls, some small nuts couple washers, your fuel valve, and then the plate. My plate is really faded. I'm not sure if that's a bad printing job or um, 
I thought there was a protective cover on it, but there isn't. That's it. So I've uh, reached out to the forum, and I'm going to send Jamie at Ranza an email and just say, is that is that correct? But either way, I'm going to get it all set up um, and probably just not put the rivets in on that one until I find out if that's the correct part. This is as far as I can go with this uh, fuel valve cover plate until I find out if that's correct. Look how washed out that is. That can't be right. So I'll wait to hear out. So I've got a click out in. I've got these uh, tiny little uh bolts going through with washers and uh nuts on the other side and i won't tighten anything down or rivet until i hear well it was a protective film i had to dig and dig with my fingernail but the forum had a bunch of responses came right back and said it's a film so got it cleaned up got it on there got it installed and we're moving on well that's a, that's a good place to stop uh, the video um it's surprising to me how long some of this detail work is taking. Uh, that segment took 32.4 hours. That brings my project to date build time to 1,015.4 hours. Um, hey, I crossed the, the thousand hour mark. Uh, it's pretty exciting. From other videos and builder's logs, that's about average. Maybe I'm a little slower than some, but uh, I'm guessing I've got about 400 more hours to go. And 1,400 hours is kind of what I've seen some other builder logs at, give or take. So I think I'm on track. Uh, but with that, thank you very much for watching. And remember, dream it, just build it.